five electron domains, Lewis structures and wedge dash diagrams. Well, phosphorus pentahydride is a trigonal based biopyramidal molecule, and I've stuck on a couple of trigonal based pyramids there. There they go. So, to draw the Lewis structure out, normally you take the first symbol in the uh, formula, in this case P, and that will go in the center. Phosphorus, group 15, so that means five electrons in the valence shell, surrounded by five hydrogens. Each hydrogen shares its electron. Now how would I draw that in two dimensions? Well the plane of the molecule goes through four atoms, so I'm going to put four atoms in the plane, represented by those straight lines there. The line that goes forward towards you, the wedge that comes out, is the atom coming towards you, and the dashed line that goes back is the atom going away from you. And note that phosphorus can be stable with 10 electrons in the valence shell, as well as 8. But hold on, those angles 120 and 90 degrees, all other shapes space out the electron domains equally, getting as far apart from each other as possible. So why aren't the bond angles the same then? There must be a way to space them out. I mean, look at this guy's head. The nails are not evenly spaced out here. If you look at these four, you can see that those are further apart there and closer together there. But there is a way to bang nails into his head to get even spacing, I'm sure. Wikipedia says, simply because there is no geometrical arrangement, which can result in five equally sized bond angles in three dimensions. There's no possible mathematical solution. I just don't believe that. I think it's due to the constraints of the SP3D, you don't need to know, hybridization that gives those angles. The next molecule is sulfur tetrafluoride, and that's a seesaw shape. See how that works? So sulfur in the middle and four fluorines around the outside. Sulfur can be stable with 8, 10 or 12 electrons around it. In this case, there's a lone pair on the sulfur, and that gives the distinctive shape and the reduction of bond angle. Three atoms in the plane, and we're going to have one wedge coming out, showing the atom coming towards you, and that dashed line represents the atom going away from you. And that extra repulsive lone pair is the cause of the bond angle reduction. Next up is chlorine trifluoride. Apparently this is really nasty stuff. And you can see that that's T-shaped. So we're getting chlorine in the middle, surround it with the three fluorines, and leave a little gap for those two lone pairs. Looking at the plane of the molecule, we're going to have four atoms in the plane, so there's no need for the wedge and dash. And the lone pairs, optional, you can put them on if you want in a two-dimensional diagram. The triiodide ion is linear. Those three electron pairs, or those three central electron domains, calls the linear shape. That's pretty messy with all those crosses, so let me draw it out again, but just using dashes. If you notice, I've used all of the IB's methods. All crosses, dots and crosses, dots, and now dashes. Little story about the triiodide iron. It was in an exam a few years ago. The IB cancelled the question, too difficult. Then, of course, a couple of years later, they put it back in again as an even more difficult question. Talking of questions, draw out these Lewis structures, hit pause, see if you can work out which is which. Welcome back. Here's the answers. And we are done. And FYI, arsenic pentahydride is also known as arserane.